Hey, we're working on a little natural gas Civic. It's a 2001. And we're going to show you how to adjust the valves. Um, the way that you do it, the first thing you want to do, you notice this doesn't look like yours. Yours looks more like this. You want to pull the five bolts and the hose off. Uh, the five bolts I'm referring to are this one. Let's turn it like that. That, 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 and that. And also take the spark plug wires out and feed them off of this. This blocks access to this bolt, this little loom holder. So you want to bend that slightly to the right and just leave it that way. That's the best way to service it. And then there's a little hose that you got to take off there. You pinch the little clamp that's right here, slide it up, and you can pull it off. Your gasket should stick here, 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 and here, and it should stick when you're done because you're going to put silicone in that little crack in that little corner uh, so that it won't leak. Once you get those off, uh, the next thing to do is pull off the power steering pump. What I do, I'm doing some more work, so don't worry about the motor mount. You can leave that on in most cases. But I do like to pull the power steering pump because it's not very hard. It's just two bolts. There's one at the bottom here and then one at the top here. The top one comes out the right hand side. The bottom one comes out this hand side. This is 12 millimeter. And uh, you can see the little slide that it goes in down here. And then there's this part here. I get rid of this uh, ground cable from the body here just to make it easier to work with. So once you've pulled it up, you'll notice that the tank has this little uh, bracket thing that goes into this receiver and so you want to pull back on the tab and pull that up and then it causes a power steering pump and reservoir to get up out of the way so I just lay those up like that now you got three bolts that hold this upper cover on and you have to get these off so that you can see which one to adjust when um, you can see that there's a bolt here there's another one down here and that one actually you don't have to pull just the top two this one and this one I'm gonna go further on this little venture so and then the next thing you want to do is you pull these off and it won't want to come off until you unbuckle the little clip that's around the uh, dipstick tube you see this little clip here it's been unbuckled so you just unbuckle that with a screwdriver or something pop it off it just clips on and then once this can move forward uh, then you can get this off and the reason why that is is that this cover has a slot on the inside right here and that slot corresponds with the other cover there's a little track that it rides in right here and when those track together you have to pull it all the way out you can't pull it out unless you pull this see the little gap down the side here so that's what that's about now when you look at a Honda uh, little thing here you can see how it says up on the cam wheel and it's in the down position I'm gonna rotate that so that it's up but this is what you pay attention to where it says up when it's in the up position that's at top dead center for number one cylinder and then as you rotate it clockwise it goes in firing order I think it's one three four two um, does it say on this one sometimes they'll say it on the intake manifold sometimes they'll say it on here uh, but basically you just want to get your firing order. You can find that online for whichever Civic you have. <clears throat> and uh, so I adjust cylinder number one, which is the closest one here. These are the cylinders. This is one, two, three, four. Isn't that simple? So when this is in the up position here, by turning the crank bolt down here, um, you'd adjust number one when that's at one, and then when it's at 90 degrees, then you'd adjust the next one in the firing order. Then when it's in the down position, you'd adjust the third one. And then when it's at 9 o'clock, you'd do the fourth one. Now to do these, it will tell you what your gap or your valve lash should be on here. At least it should, yeah. See, it says valve lash. The intake's going to be uh, 0.2 plus or minus 0.02 millimeters. And the exhaust are going to be 0.25 plus or minus 0.02 millimeters. And so that's what they should be. So you get a feeler gauge, you put the feeler gauge in underneath it here. These are a 10 millimeter nut and then a screwdriver. So you crack that counterclockwise on the nut and they'll loosen it up so you can adjust it. So, so for example, I'm in the down position and my firing order, for example, is one, three, four, two. Um, if it's in the down position, you go, you know, one, three, down would be four, and then this position would be two if that were my firing order so if I'm in the down position one 
three, four. So I'd be adjusting this one in that position. So I crack these loose and adjust them because basically you want your valves in the closed position. You can watch and see how they are and not even have to pull this cover off if you can spot if you're uh, in the closed position where it's all the way up. You know, otherwise this is just to make sure, kind of like, you know, hold your hand, you know, walk you through it kind of thing. But if it's in the top position, that's where it should be when you go to adjust it. So, anyway, and when you put your feeler gauges in there, you should have a light drag as you, you know, a consistent drag to where anywhere you stop, it really wants to grab, but to where you don't have to really, you know, be scraping your feeler gauge. Just a light drag. So that's how you do it so these would be your intake because these are your fuel injectors on this side this is a natural gas one so it's really got fat fuel injectors um, but this would be your intake spec ones and these would be your exhaust specs see the exhaust so and that's how you adjust the valves on your Honda Civic when you're done you just put it together the same way make sure to leave yourself room to slide that cover in and then put the two bolts in and then uh, put this on, you know, with the uh, bolts finger tight. And then you can grab your belt and string your belt back up onto it. And then when you go to tighten it, this is where a half inch uh, ratchet or a breaker bar or whatever will fit in to help you to pull the belt tight. You want to pull on that and get it snug. Snug down your bolts, especially the one down here. Um, and you want to make it so that the belt on the longest run down to the crank uh, your belt should be able to twist 90 degrees and then really get hard to turn past that and that's when you know that you're tight enough when you feel that it's that tight enough then you tighten the rest of the bolts up if you over tighten your power steering pump you'll jack it up and then you'll wind up having to replace it because the bearing or whatever will have too much stress on it you should be able to turn your belt up 90 degrees on the longest run um, but like I say not more than that and it's the same on either side because it just goes straight to the crank so it doesn't matter which side top or bottom just in the middle turn it up 90 degrees and it should spring back to flat there you go if you like this video be sure to click the like button and uh, if you want to add it to your favorites just click add to down arrow below and uh, click favorites and then you can access it and find it easy sometimes stuff's hard to find again on YouTube I don't know what the deal is um, but anyway if you want to see more like this click subscribe and uh, it'll be in your subscription box the next time I post something. Thanks for watching. Cheers.